Hi, I'm Ray Salisbury, a photography tutor from New Zealand. I will show you how to merge a range of photos together using a simple feature within Photoshop. The Photo Merge function has been available for ages, at least since CS4 came out. It allows you to make wider and taller images than your camera and lens can capture. You can produce really high resolution images, great for wall mounted prints. I have here a sequence of five shots I recorded at Green Lake in Fiordland National Park. There's actually seven images as I photographed my hand at the start and end of the sequence. Later on when you're sifting through hundreds of photos, these bookends will remind you that you've taken a special panoramic sequence. It is of utmost importance that you get some things right in camera. Firstly, you must overlap your photos for this to work properly allow from 25% to 40% overlap. Secondly, lock your camera down on a sturdy tripod so the horizon does not move within the frame. If you don't have a tripod, you can stand in one spot, just keep your camera level. Next, keep all settings on your camera the same, especially focus and exposure. I switch the camera lens to manual focus so it doesn't move. And use aperture priority so only the shutter speed can change but not the depth of field. Remove any circular polarizer filters off your lens as this creates vignettes and blue skies. And finally, it is preferable to shoot in portrait orientation to get more detail into each individual shot. Firstly, it's important that your computer has enough memory to work with, so close all other programs. This process can be quite quick or take lots and lots of time depending on the size and number of your files. Within Photoshop, open up the series of photos you wish to merge. Go File, Open. Here are my five photos of Green Lake in Fiordland National Park. One, two, three, four, five. So I have my five photos open in Photoshop. Now watch this. Here's where you find this amazing little feature. File, Automate, Photo Merge. Now inside the Photo Merge dialog box you should be able to see the series of photos here. If not, click on Add Open Files. There they are. On the left hand menu you have about six options. Auto usually works just fine. If you had a building in the center of your photograph, choose the Perspective option. Photoshop will correct for any lens distortion. This option is good for a flatter 2D scene. However, if your scene wraps around you, choose cylindrical. Only use the spherical option if your scene wraps around you for the full 360 degrees. You must click on Blend Images Together. That does what it says. Hit Vignette Removal. This is important to remove the darkened corners of each image inherent with using wide angle lenses. Also, geometric distortion correction will fix any inherent lens distortion. I am going to choose to click the bottom checkbox. It operates the Content Aware Fill tool automatically. You'll see what this does in a moment. Click on OK, sit back and watch Photoshop do the magic for you. You might want to pour yourself a cup of coffee while you wait. Because I am choosing to merge together five large photos, it will take quite a while. I shot the five images in RAW on a 22 megapixel full frame DSLR. So this will take a while. Whereas if you were just merging three small JPEG files, it would be over in a jiffy. Voila, that looks pretty good. Okay, see the marching ants around the perimeter of the image? That's what the Content Aware tool has done. And if we hide that layer, you can see how much extra data Photoshop has added, particularly to the blue sky at the top and to the black bed at the bottom. To hide those marching ants, we go Select, Deselect. Now over here on the Layers palette, if I alt click on the eyeball symbol of each layer, you can see how much of this photo was actually used in the final image. Voila! 
Now, to the right of each individual layer is a mask. Whatever is black on the mask is hidden. Whatever is white on the mask is visible. Well, that's pretty much it. But to complete our exercise, we need to grab the crop tool. To find it, go to the toolbox. It's the fifth one down. Now, you can crop this however you want to. But I must first point out an error. See the blue sky at the top? On location, I forgot to remove my circular polarizing filter from the front of the lens. When I was shooting straight ahead at this mountain, you can see that the polarizing filter was working. But over here on the left, when my camera was not 90 degrees to the sun, but I was pointing into the light, the polarizing filter didn't work. So you end up with this sort of vignette at the top. I'm going to hide that by cropping and moving the node down. Now a beautiful mirror image like this lends itself towards symmetry. So that's about right there. I am putting the Lakeshore dead center. Hit the enter key to authorize the crop. Voila! <laughs> Take that rule of thirds. We're nearly finished. If we go to the layers palette at the top right, look for flatten image. And now we have a solitary background layer. The last thing we need to do is go file, save. Give this wonderful panoramic a name and choose a file format such as JPEG, save, yep, make sure it's 12, the largest file size, OK, and our tutorial is over. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I'm back. One last thing, don't worry about all the technical terminology in the videos, just download my free step-by-step -step PDF checklist. And if you really dig my videos, please subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Time to get out of here.